Well, time for a video on energy. All the different types of energy, conservation of energy, transfer of energy, things like that. Let's start off with what energy is. Energy is the ability to do work or cause change, depending on which class you're in. Ability to do work tends to be the physics definition. Cause change tends to be the chemistry definition. If anything, the physics definition is very specific. Because in physics, work is moving an object or an energy transferred to an object through motion. A very specific type of change, talking about a change in location or change in position. In physics, work is calculated by taking force times distance. Um, you apply a force to an object and that object has to move. If it doesn't move, there is no work. If it moves but there's no force being applied, there is no work. So in physics, we're very, very specific about what energy is. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy is the ability to make something move. There are two major types of energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Potential energy is the energy of position, or stored energy as it's sometimes called. I prefer this definition more so than the stored energy one because it's functional. It allows you to identify potential energy. Resting position of an object is the position that it normally wants to be in. So in the case of something like this pen, it wants to be on the ground. If it's not on the ground, if I hold it in the air, it has potential energy because of its position. I like this definition because it's functional. It's something you can use. The type of potential energy that you have to be most familiar with in physical science is something called gravitational potential. And it's like holding this pen off the ground. Anything off the ground has gravitational potential energy because gravity gives it the potential to move. Gravity gets the potential to change position. The higher an object is, the more potential energy it has. The further off the ground it is, the more ability to move it has. And it kind of makes sense. If something's two inches off the ground, it only has the ability to move two inches. If something is two feet off the ground, it has the ability to move two feet. The further off the ground you are, the more gravitational potential energy that you have. Also, the heavier an object is, the more potential energy it has. That old phrase, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, is gravitational potential energy. Something that's relatively small has the potential to move. And when it gets to its location, it doesn't have much potential to cause any change in it. Think about a ping pong ball. You hold a ping pong ball two feet above your foot and drop it on your foot, yeah, it'll move. Yeah, it'll hit your foot. But when it hits your foot, it won't cause much change. And that's because it's not very heavy. It didn't have much potential energy to begin with. Now do the same thing with a bowling ball. Hold it two feet above your foot and drop it. Again, don't do this at home. I say this in class a lot. It's just an extreme example to help you think about it. Don't drop bowling balls on your feet. But if you did, you held it two feet above your foot and dropped it, it's going to move two feet. It's going to move the same distance that the, bowl, uh, the ping pong ball did. But it's going to cause a whole lot more change than the ping pong ball. It's heavier. It has more potential energy. When it reaches its destination, it's going to cause a much bigger change because of that extra potential energy. Kinetic energy is all about motion. Anything moving has kinetic energy, large or small. So if you're talking about a speck of dust floating around the room, it's got kinetic energy. If you're talking about a bowling ball rolling across the floor, much larger object, it's still moving. It's still got kinetic energy. I get affected by two things, this time mass and velocity. The more mass it has, the more kinetic energy it has. Um, somebody throws a ping pong ball at you, no big deal. Someone throws a bowling ball at you, well that's a problem. Bowling ball have a lot more mass than what that ping pong ball does and it's going to cause a much bigger change because of that extra mass. The faster it's moving, the more kinetic energy it has as well. If somebody lobs a baseball at you underhanded, you can catch it in your bare hand, no big deal. It doesn't have much velocity, so it doesn't have much kinetic energy. But if that person throws that baseball at you as hard as they can, well, that increase in velocity will give it more kinetic energy. It will cause a bigger change to your hand. Objects can have both kinetic and potential energy at the same time. It can be moving and out of its resting position all at the same time, in which case it would have both. So throwing a ball through the air. Because it's off the ground, it has potential energy. Because it's moving, it has kinetic energy. So a little bit of both in a lot of cases. There are more types of energy. We can take this kinetic and potential and break it down into smaller categories. Mechanical energy, 
When we talk about mechanical energy, we're talking about the energy of whole objects or whole systems. Again, throwing that baseball through the air. That's an example of mechanical energy. We're talking about the energy of a whole object or a whole system. Thermal energy takes our objects and looks at the atoms and molecules that make them up. I hold this pen in the air. It has gravitational potential energy. That is a form of mechanical energy because we're talking about the whole object. Now, if I wanted to talk about the atoms and molecules that make this pen up, remember kinetic theory? The atoms and molecules in, in matter are in constant random motion. The atoms and molecules that make up this pen are in constant motion. If I'm talking about that kinetic energy, that heat energy that they have, I'm talking about thermal energy. The difference between these two is a difference of scale. Whole objects, atoms and molecules that make them up. When we get down to nuclear energy, now we're just talking about a part of that atom. We're talking about the nucleus. This is energy that is found in the nucleus of atoms. This involves the fission and fusion that we talked about earlier. Light energy is a form of electromagnetic energy or electromagnetic radiation. It's energy that comes again from atoms. Or again, breaking the scale down even further. Most light comes from the movement of electrons then in this case. So again, making an even smaller scale uh, type of energy here. Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It travels as a wave. We're going to talk about it a lot more in unit number 13. Sound is a type of mechanical energy. This time it's a vibration or a wave that moves through matter. Again, it's a form of mechanical energy because we're talking about vibrating whole objects here. We'll talk about it again in unit 13 when we talk about light. Chemical energy is the energy stored in chemical bonds, again taking that scale and breaking it down to a smaller uh, level. Chemical energy is the energy stored in chemical bonds. When bonds are made, energy is stored in those bonds, like charging a battery. When those bonds are broken, the energy is released. Uh, getting the energy out from burning wood, for example, that exothermic reaction. All that heat, all that light comes from chemical energy, energy that was stored in the wood's chemical bonds. The last one on my list here, electrical energy again, small scale energy, we're talking about the movement of electrons in electric fields. And a tiny part of the atom moving around causes the electrical energy that we see. We will talk a lot about it in the next unit, unit 12. In this unit though, our, our main goal is the mechanical energy, our main focus is the mechanical energy. Thermal, that came back when we talked about changes in state in the kinetic theory. Nuclear, we talked about that in our fission and fusion section back in that unit. Uh, the chemical energy, that's really part of that endothermic, exothermic reaction stuff that we've already talked about. Um, electrical, again, coming up in the next unit, light and sound in our last one. Energy can transform from one form to another. It can change forms. It can start off as one thing and end up something else altogether. Happens in all kind of objects around us. A windmill, for example, takes the mechanical energy of moving wind and turns it into electrical energy transforms it from one form to another. A lamp, a simple device like a lamp. Electrical energy goes into it, light and heat come out of it. It is an energy transformation. We are changing it from one form to another. This happens around us all the time. When you're eating that hamburger at lunch, you're getting chemical energy from that hamburger, think about all the transformations that energy has gone through. Started off as light from the sun. Got turned into chemical energy by a, a plant. Some cow came along and ate that plant, that grass, and it turned that chemical energy into other chemical energy and heat. Now we've taken that chemical energy and we're going to eat it. And we're going to again turn it into heat. And not motion too, when we move around. All kind of transformations taking place around us all the time. Energy can also be transferred from one object to another. This happens oftentimes when those, those objects collide with each other. As in the case here where the car hit the truck. When the car hits the truck, its kinetic energy is transferred to the truck. Its motion resulted in the truck being lifted up off the ground. Its kinetic energy gave the truck kinetic energy, transferred from one to another. Bowling is an exercise in energy transfer. You transfer energy from your hand to the bowling ball. Bowling ball rolls down the lane and transfers the energy from itself to the pins. Energy is transferred from one object to another on a regular basis as well. Through all of these transformations and transfers, that energy is conserved. Again, conserved means saved. It does not change. When energy is transformed from one form to another, it is not lost or destroyed. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. 
When an electrical outlet gives us the electricity we need to run this Promethean board or that camera, when we have electricity and we have electrical energy, we have to recognize that it came from some other form of energy. We didn't just make it out of nowhere. The energy that runs this Promethean board comes from nuclear energy. This electrical energy started off as nuclear. The energy that runs this camera, this electrical energy, came from chemical energy in a battery. All the forms of energy that we have come from some other form. When we use them up, we change them into something else. When I use the electrical energy in this Promethean board, I turn it into light. You can hear the fan turning. I turn it into mechanical energy. I haven't lost the energy that the, the, the electric company produced. I just turned it into something else. And that's the way it goes with energy. You don't create new energy. You just take one form and you turn it into something else. You don't ever destroy energy when you use it. Again, you just change it from one form to something else. These transformations and transfers all occur under the context of the law of conservation of energy, making sure that energy is not created or destroyed. That's about it for the energy one. Again, oversimplified as usual, but hey, it's 11 minutes.